Port, 100 first class appearances for Essex, congratulations, that's a fantastic achievement. What are your thoughts and emotions at reaching that milestone? Uh, obviously very proud. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, pride's the, the main one, um, I think. You know, when I played my first, I didn't really didn't expect to... It certainly wasn't something that crossed my mind coming, what's it, like eight, nine years later to, to be playing in your 100th for a club, so very proud. And you had to bide your time a little bit at the start of your career. By all accounts, there was a, a moment in time when you were considering potentially even the future away from the game. Could you talk us through that? Yeah, it's so kind of in between. So I left Middlesex Academy, um, did a couple of years in the YCs, and then yeah, I, I kind of felt like I'd had my chance and um, it passed, off, <laughs> and like passed passed me by. So I decided to kind of look at working opportunities and started doing a bit of work in recruitment. And then all of a sudden, the opportunity came up to to sign at Essex and never looked back. Yeah. yeah and do you think that that the fact that you really had to kind of work extra hard at that stage of your career, has that helped kind of fuel motivation for the rest of your career as well? Yeah, it's certainly from the mental side of things, having experienced life away from the game, it took a lot of the pressure away. Because I think pre that period of working in the real world, it kind of, cricket was everything. It was like, what am I gonna do if cricket doesn't work out? And then kind of getting your head around the life without it, actually kind of freed me up when I signed here it was like I just really enjoyed it just had fun just yeah enjoyed appreciated every opportunity I got and made the most of it thankfully and you kind of alluded to this earlier on but when when you made your, your debut against Kent back in 2014 did you have an idea of the career that was ahead of you at Essex or was it just taking it game by game it was, at that point it was I mean first class cricket up to that point felt like it had gotten so far away so at that point, that first game, all I can remember is thinking, no matter what, I've played a first last game, no one can take that away from me. And then I got the wicket, I think it was like my fifth ball, and it was like, right, I'm taking the wicket in first last cricket, that's what, like, I've done that now. And that, that was literally it, and then kind of played a few more, played well, all the way through to the end of that season, and then the next year I wasn't even sure if I was going to play, and then ended up starting and taking the new ball and kind of things just kicked on from there. And yeah, during that time you had the likes of David Marston and Graham Napier to learn from. Under influence of kind of players like those, did you feel like it was a period of major progression for you? Yeah, I mean those two had a massive impact on my career. They were the, the senior bowlers when I came into the side and they, uh, they really helped me a lot. It was, it was quite an experienced side that I came into. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of players that had played international cricket, played IPLs, and been around for a long time. And, and so those two really helped me kind of feel at home and kind of taught me how to go about bowling, how to look after myself, how to get wicket. Well, the, the simple things like how to get wickets on different grounds and how to work out different batters. So yeah, they had such a big influence on my career. Yeah. And fast forward a couple of years. Essex have been promoted to Division 1 and both Masters and Napier have retired. Did you feel like that was almost, that was your time, that was your chance to lead the attack and take on that bit of extra responsibility? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I really did because um, it was almost like that first game, 2017, it was a completely new attack. We had uh, Harmy, who none of us really knew much about at that point. We learned pretty quickly. <laughs> um, you know, when Neil Wagner was the overseas, and I honestly can't remember who the third. I think he might have been. He might have been the third seamer in that first game of 2017. Um, so it was a completely different attack to what we'd had uh, kind of three years before that. So. And having been kind of the guy that played every game before that, I, I, I did feel like like it was my responsibility to kind of to perform every game to take wickets for the new ball and to really be the banker for for Tendo. Yeah, and that that worked out, didn't it? That season couldn't have gone any better, both personally and as a team as well. The team won the county championship title at the first time of asking, and you took 75 wickets, the leading wicket taker in the country that year. Only, only harm have really got anywhere near you. Did you surprise yourself even by how well that season went? Yeah, I mean it was 
from a team point of view, it was a bizarre one because we played the first game here against Langs and we we barely we hung on for a draw like barely and that was kind of a realization for us like okay division one's hard like, we're gonna have to really play some good cricket to stay up and that was what we were thinking and then we went to somerset the next game and beat them uh, quite convincingly now i think we chased them down 200 i think we chased like 250 like with eight wickets in hand so and then we hung on for a draw the third game against Middlesex, so we were a little bit unsure where we were at, and then 50 over comp come did pretty well in that. And I always look at that 50 over competition, that was what defined our season, because we played really well in the 50 over comp, like the competition we've always been strong in. And that kind of built up some good momentum, and then we just literally beat everyone after that. <laughs> like literally, after that competition, we literally felt like was a, we got win on a mad run, we won like the next three or four games in the spin and just all of a sudden the belief shifted and we felt like we could win every game. And looking back at your career so far, was that season the highlight? I know there have been county championship, Bob Willis Trophy and T20 wins since, so it must be a hard choice. Yeah. It is hard. Like that, I think that one will always be, uh, in terms of, it was our first Division 1. And it was probably, I know the way we won it was so convincing in the end. But at the start of the season, we, there was no expectation. It was just trying to find our feet in Division 1. Like It was a much longer term plan than that. And then things just kind of couldn't have gone any better on a personal and a team level. And yeah, that, that'll be a tough one to forget, definitely, yeah. You've got some impressive career stats behind you. 379 wickets at shade over 24, 13 fifers and a best of 741. That's for Essex, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Do those numbers motivate you and inform how you set goals and targets for each season? Not anymore. They used to, because when I first started playing, you know, 50 wickets were spoken about a lot. And we hadn't had a bowler that had done it for a while. Um, so that was like, a big thing for me, and I, I did it a few times. And, but then I, as you get a bit older and kind of having the luxury of, uh, I suppose, being very fortunate to have had the success we've had as a club, kind of my priorities shifted and actually just being part of a team that's winning is all that's important but yeah I think I did realise the other day that I'm on I'm on 398 first class and yeah I'm not gonna lie the 400 is gonna be nice that, that's something I'll be proud of and you're only 29 so basically the halfway point of your career what have your what are your hopes going forward for both yourself and the team as well um, so for the team I would like for the unfinished player, if I, I, I like to win two more Division Ones. Really, that's me trying not to be greedy. I, you know, so we could win more, hopefully. But I, I'd like to do it two more times. I think it's it's just the, they're the memories that that are, are wedged in there. The the end of the season when you're lifting the trophy and and the nights after that. Um, so I'd like I'd like two more Division Ones. And also, I would, I'd like to see. I think we're on the right path to win another T20 as well whether I'm a part of that or not well I think I'll always be a part of it whether I'm playing or not um, being kind of at the club as long as I have been you know I still whether I'm playing or not I still want to help the guys that are playing but um, that that would be nice to win another T20 because I think when it comes because I feel like it will come in the next couple of years it'll come the right way like there's been a journey you can see the clear journey like the, like Michael Pepper and the way he's progressed, Paul Water this year, and you know, the recruitment of Critch and uh, Rosso. So I think that's going to be an exciting one to watch. I'd like to see, see us get that.